Power Creep is one a character who was once good at a game. It's just not as good anymore, but not because the character is nerfed or changed or anything like that. It's only because there was another character who came out after him who just does everything he does just better. So the old character just doesn't look as good anymore. Or in brain rot terms, it's when a character gets mocked. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how bad was Power Creep in Genshin Impact, if there was at all, maybe there wasn't. And we're just going to be comparing some of the oldest OG teams and main DPSs to the newest and best teams. Teams. And we're gonna see how far they are from each other. So let's travel back right away to 1.0, the earliest version of Genshin Impact. At that point, I would say the best DPS at that era was probably Diluc. There were just not many five stars, and he was the only like real main DPS five stars. So if you wanted a main DPS, Diluc was the best way to go. At the time, if you wanted to play Diluc, you probably just wanted to play him in like a simple vaporize team with Diluc, Shengshou, and Sucrose for the uh, Verdescent Resistance Shred, and then Jean Li. Jean Li came out at 1.1 but it was still around the same. It's like the same era. That team you're looking at was doing around 30,000 DPS with vaporizing Diluc's hits. It was just pretty simple. We just do like a normal attack and skill sequence with Diluc and vaporize them with Shingcho and that's it. Keep in mind these numbers are not like very accurate. It depends a lot like what weapons you had on Diluc, what constellations and stuff like that. These are mostly with C0 five stars and the four stars, it depends. But generally it was around 30,000 DPS, which at the time was just good. You're gonna be able to clear content. So everything was okay. We fast forward a couple of versions to 1.2 and we get a very significant upgrade from Diluc. At that point, we got Ganyu. Ganyu is just very good. She just simply had very good multipliers of her charge attacks, and you can just spam it, maybe melt it or reverse melt it if you can, and she's going to deal humongous amounts of damage. Looking back at a simple Ganyu team back then, it was say like Ganyu, Sean Ling, and then Bennett and Sean Lee. Just a Ganyu hyper carry team. This type of team usually deals around 50,000 DPS, which is a huge jump from the best DPS we had before, which is Diluc. Keep in mind, I'm not doing every single character came out. I'm just doing like the signature DPSs that came out who kind of like were a significant jump. And Ganyu is one of them. Child before was not, so I didn't include him before you tell me. But yeah, 50,000 DPS was just like super good at the time. It was crazy damage. I remember just everyone was freaking out about Ganyu. So yeah, that was like the damage ceiling after that. After that, we had Zhao, who I was using and still using him with the same build in the video you're seeing right now, like in the background footage. When Zhao came out, it was just like pretty cool. You know, you can jump and stuff. It was a very new thing. And he was also like a very selfish hyper carry. Usually you just want to play him in like a hyper carry team, just like say Zhao, super grows for the energy, then Bennett and John Lee. In this setting, like an R1 weapon maybe, this Xiao team was dealing around like 32,000 DPS maybe, which is not as good as Ganyu, but when you consider like multi-target and stuff like that, it was also pretty decent. It, it was definitely not bad at all. And then the final DPS that I can remember from like the OG era, which is like from 1.0 to 1.7, I think, was Hu Tao. She came out around the same time as Xiao, I think, and she was just pretty good. She had like no um, internal cooldowns. You can just vaporize all of her hits, and that was super super, super good back then. She was like the first kind of character from this kind and being able to like double up your damage pretty much because she doesn't have any internal cooldowns was super good. Just charge attack and that's it. At the time, we just wanted to play Hu Tao in like a normal vaporized team, which didn't even change that much now, by the way, we're going to get to it in a bit. So we just wanted to play like Hu Tao, Xing Shou, say like Sucrose and then Zhang Li. Zhang Li was very common back then, by the way, because healers were not in the meta just simply. And without a healer, you don't want to like die from losing HP. So you just wanted to shield her and he was and still the best shielder in the game. That's why Jean Li was like a very common character to use in teams back then. But yeah, that team would usually deal around like 37,000 to 40k DPS. Again, depends on like what gear you have on Hu Tao. It really depends a lot. Like if you have Staff Homa and refinements and stuff like that. Constellations too, but for C0 Hu Tao, you know, just your average like free to play or maybe low spenders. She was dealing around like 37,000 DPS, maybe 40,000 if you're lucky. It depends on how many hits you deal and stuff like that. Which is around the same, you know, vibe that the old teams were dealing. So yeah, these are the numbers for the old teams. As you guys can see it here, it was very close to each other in general. Ganyu was dominating for a long time. But yeah, nevertheless, at that point, there wasn't really that much power creep. So that was like the oldest boomer generation of DPSs in general in teams. Now let's fast forward very fast to around 3.4. That was the introduction of one of the strongest DPSs we still have right now, which is Alhaitham. Alhaitham just came out 
very good in the Dendro meta. And with his Hyper Bloom teams, it was just super, super good. It was just generally like a new level of DPS. For example, as I said before, a simple Hal Hatham Hyper Bloom team. Well, let's say like Hal Hatham, Shang Shou, the Nahida, and Raiden. C0, by the way, with all the five stars. This team, you can expect it to deal around like 82 thousand dps this is more than double of all of the previous teams you have before it was a big jump in time but i'm taking it like that so you can see how power creep kind of is so a current best team in the game is more of like the double of what a best team back in like around 1.1 to 1.2 was dealing in most teams at least for about the same amount of investment let's take a look at another dps that came out after um which is noviet again one of the best main dps's we still have right now a simple just hyper Bloom Nuviet team again. It's just gonna be like Nuviet, say Furana, Nahida, and then Raiden. You can expect this team to deal around 78,000 DPS. Again, just hovering more than double of what the previous team's damage can deal. Another main DPS that came out recently, which is Arlequino. If you look at one of her best teams, for example, like Arlequino, Yellen, Bennett, Jean Lee, just a simple vaporized team, she can deal around like 75,000 DPS, which is again around what some of the best DPSs can deal right now. And if we look at like some of probably the latest strong DPS we had, which is Milani. If we take a normal Milani vaporized team, say Milani, Gashina, Sean Ling, and Sean Lee, you can expect this team to deal around 70,000 DPS. She's a little lower, but keep in mind, she just, her teams are just simply not complete yet. With the introduction of like the Pyro Archon and stuff like that, she can probably deal a little more. But nevertheless, it's still more than double the damage of some of the early teams. So yeah, these are the numbers for like the best teams we have right now. Putting them side by side with the earliest teams, we can clearly see a huge difference. It's literally around double so i think we can clearly answer the question did we see power creep in genshin impacts in a way yes the evidence is very clear some of the best teams from early some of the best teams from now put them together you can see the graphs by yourself it's a huge damage difference everyone can see it everyone has their eyes we cannot really argue that but i just want to add something that's super important those numbers are true yes but here we're comparing the teams if we take the main dps's alone and we just separate those teams for example, let's say Diluc. That Diluc team were dealing like 30,000 DPS. Yes, for sure. If we take just Diluc as a main DPS alone, we can see that he had kind of more like upgrades. For example, we just recently saw like Sean Yoon. She just introduced a whole new play style in the game. You know, any character can just be a plunge in DPS right now. And it happens to be that Diluc just had one of the highest plunge multipliers in the game. So now you can make Diluc a plunge in DPS and back then you can't. If we look at a Diluc and Sean Yoon team, for example, let's say Diluc, Sean Yoon, Fiorina and Bennett, this team deals around 62,000 DPS, which is so less than like the best teams we showed before, but it's definitely nowhere near as bad as compared to like the newest teams. It's like almost the same tier. Let's take another DPS, for example, let's say Zhao. Zhao has had many upgrades too since then. If you play Zhao in one of his like more modern teams right now, say Zhao, then let's say Farazan, which was a big upgrade, then let's say Fischl and Bennett. Before he was dealing around 32,000 DPS, with that new team, he can deal around 58,000 DPS, which is a huge difference. It's almost double. So now, even though, again, he's not one of the top DPSs we have, but he can definitely still compete with the best teams right now. Let's take one last example. Let's say Hu Tao, because she's kind of like the most extreme. If we take her and put her in more of like a modern team with like Dendro, for example, just like a version team, because Dendro is the meta right now, you can just say Hu Tao, Yellen, and Fiorina, and Beiju, just a normal version team with Hu Tao. That team is going to deal around 72,000 DPS, which is very very clearly in the same tier as the best teams in the game we have right now. So Hu Tao from 1.1 or 2, I think, is still a top tier DPS we have right now if you put her at the right team. So yeah, comparing those teams, those like upgraded old teams with the newest best teams we have right now, we can see the difference isn't really that big at all. It's very close. Maybe they're not the best, but say for example a Hu Tao team is better than like a Mulani team right now at this point or at least like very close so even though I said before there was power creep in Genshin Impact yes to be more specific it's not a character power creep it's more of a team power creep many previous main DPS's say if you got like an early main DPS those main DPS's just got very significant upgrades over time to the point where they're still very relevant right now they're not like bad or anything they can still deal like top tier damage right now even though they're very old main DPS's so I I would say Genshin did a very good job at managing power creep. Every character can be super good at some point. You just got to follow the meta at the time a little bit and then 
look for upgrades for that character and you'll probably gonna be good for a long time. And to be honest, even the old teams with the non-upgraded teams can probably still clear the abyss right now. So it's not even like a problem. So yeah, what are we even talking about here? It's not even like a competitive game. Why am I making these videos, man? Just get the characters you want.